In this video, we're going to talk about Samsung Pay, doing something interesting in the U.S. Partnered with Ripple? Not exactly. We're also going to take a look at a statement that Ashish Birla stated a little bit earlier. What was it? We're going to find out. And we got lots of XRP news, and hey, we're going to have fun. And it all starts right now. Chip here with the XRP Minute on the chain for the very first time. Uh, if you want to learn more about on the chain, simply go to onthechain.io. If you scroll to the bottom, there's a sign up form. You can sign up for some future updates. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. We'll be releasing it and we'll give you some updates here and there. Don't worry, we're not going to spam you. Also, you can see who some of the other content contributors are. Some of them are, you know, in this stream right now. And there's going to be some future additions as well. So we're pretty excited about it. And I want to say welcome. Hey, I know we're on a new channel. We're on a new channel. This is On The Chain Live. Obviously, you see my other show back there because I didn't change my set. That's okay. I wanted to get you a little bit more accustomed to Off The Block. That's my new show called Chip Off The Block. Makes sense, right? Talking about blockchain stuff here. We talk about the XRP Minute and all things XRP. So let's jump into it. Let's put our helmets on. Let's dive right in there. But hey, before we do this, let's do some shout outs. What's going on in the chat? So I got Ed French is in here. We got Bones. And I just want to say, guys, if you did not see the interview that Bones and Bob Moneybags did today with Maddie Greenspan was freaking awesome. Definitely one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. You know, hats off to you, Bones, uh, Bob Moneybags. You guys had some really serious good lines of questions. And um, I also loved some of the restraint. It was just a really nice dialogue back and forth. I loved hearing from Maddie. I've seen him on other things. I've, I've read about him. But I want to tell you guys, if go check out the zoo. If you haven't seen it, it was dropped really early. It looked like these guys got up at like 4 a.m., Bones. You can cop you can say something about that, but really it was awesome. It was really one of the um, best videos I've seen in a long time. So I want to say nice job, man. And uh, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the people. We always like to talk about the first one in here. Of course, it's none other than Danny Torres. Danny Torres is in here. I love it. Thank you guys for coming over to the new channel. But the big shout out of the night goes for, and I don't, don't take this Danny the wrong way, but Ferdy is up super early. Ferdy is early. Ferdy is early. Ferdy is early. You know, and um, he blew up my phone here. He's like, Chip, what's going on? I'm like, oh crap, I can't let Ferdy down. It's the middle of the night. It's like, what is it, like four in the morning? He got up, man. Thank you for being here. So the big shout out of the night goes out to Ferdy. And um, yeah, man, it's awesome to have you here. I didn't, I, I was just shocked. I don't even know what to say. Let's run it down. We have XRP Connie Angel. Thank you. Um, we got XRP Carolina. What's going on? Um, Carolina's in the house. We got Dansky and um, Jaime Revilla. If I'm saying that right, Revilla, I don't know. I'm saying it the uh, Spanish way. What's up, Jaime? Thank you for joining. Wildstar 1063 is here tonight. And who else are we missing? What are we missing? Oh, yeah, Rain. Rain here. You know, Rain is in the spot tomorrow night, but he's at 8 o'clock. Um, you know, Rain, you should, um, I got some good feedback from somebody out there. They were saying, hey, you know, I don't usually watch live streams, but I'm pretty excited about the fact that you put the times, you know, alternate times. So Ferdy knew to get up at 3 or 4 in the morning, whatever time it is there. But I always like to put that little time thing out, and it's a little app that I have on my phone that – you just put the time, uh, your time zone, and it makes all the other time zones. And then it came to me like, why doesn't Twitter do this? Can you imagine if like Twitter, like you put any event in there and it would take whatever time zone, because it knows where you live. You, you basically put it into Twitter. But imagine if it like automatically and said, hey, tonight at, and you didn't have to go hunting and looking it up or trying to do some complex math. It would all be there for you. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, Ed French, French from the ranch. What's going on? He says, chip. And uh, Bones, of course, is in the house. We're lighting it up with the big old flame. And these guys lit it up today. Guys, I tell you, you got to watch this video. It's freaking awesome, man. And I thought it was going to be a short interview. And it ended up being a pretty decent interview. I thought he was going to be gone and split in 15 minutes. No, I think it was over an hour, if my uh, memory serves. Um, XRP Connie Angel saying hello to everybody. And um, see you. Um, am I saying that right? See you 3SS. Something was deleted there, so I don't know what's going on there. X marks the spot, and I uh, hope I didn't forget anybody. Who let the bulls out? Who? 
who, 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 who let the bulls out? I'll tell you who that is. I'll tell you who let the bulls out. XRP. Jungle Link in the house. You found me good. Was on the vid channel. Yeah, we got two channels here. And if you actually look below, you can sub the other channel. Basically, you know, and we did this on advice from um, my financial advisor, Jungle Link. No, my, my other advisor, my life advisor, my life coach, Jungle Link did this. And what I like about the fact that he said, hey, you know, I've been penalized in the past. And, you know, I've seen this myself. You know, it had some pretty good growth. So we said, you know what, let's separate it. Let's have a live channel where we'll do roundtables here. The XRP Minute is going to still live here. My other show, which you can see right over my uh, my background, my my shoulder over here, which is the uh, off the block, which I would do in you know, shorter videos. People are like, Chip, you got to shorten it up, man. Stop talking. They're like, make it short, make it fun. But, you know, shut up, I mean, for a change. So I was like trying to, my first one I tried to do under 10 minutes, and I think it was over 10 minutes. So that's what we're doing here. XRP DTs here. And, um, yeah, who let the bulls out? So let's jump in. And we're going to put our helmets on. We're going to crash dive right into the shallow end. Let's do it. So let's talk about this. It's pretty exciting news. I saw this today. And um, so, you know, Samsung Pay rolling out money transfer service for U.S. users. I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. Great. You know, if you use Google Pay or something else, that's fun. And then I saw this one and I was like, wait a minute, Finabler um, UAE exchange Ripple to begin blockchain payments by first quarter. You remember this when this came out? This came out a while ago. This was, I believe, from February, if I'm not mistaken. So that's where we heard, first heard that name Finabler. Then what happened? Well, I'll tell you what. So um, holy cow, these are all out of order. Wow. Hang on a second. Hang on a second, peeps. Let's do this. Yeah. So here it was. This was at XRP Research Center at XRP Center. I saw, well, this was after I saw this other article, and look at this. Samsung Pay and Finabler announced cross-border payment uh, partnership, but it's interesting because they are using Finabler um, for the cross-border payments, and Finabler is a Ripple partner. Now, it doesn't spell it out. It never does in these articles. You know that. It never actually says what's going down. Um, yeah, key partner. And then this one here, Samsung uh, Pay partners with RippleNet member Finabler to power cross-border payments. This new in app international money transfer service, first of its kind in the U.S., offers users seamless and secure cross-border payments to 47 countries through a variety of payment methods, all within Samsung's native mobile wallet. Pretty cool. The wait's finally over. First international money transfer service. And it's pretty good news for the U.S. because it, it, they're kind of right. We don't really have anything here. Now, it's not a big deal if you live in other parts of the, of the world because you've had this for some time, especially if you're in Asia. It's really not too big of a deal. So um, it's really the – now, when, when I saw this tweet, which is XRP Research Center, and it was he was actually quoted in that first article that we just looked at said the money transfer service provided by a subsidiary of Finabler called Travelex. And you guys might know Travelex. They do a lot of currency exchange stuff. And that's how I know them. But I had no clue they were a subsidiary. So then I jumped over and, and uh, started looking over here. And here it is right here. Um, this is Travelex right here. It talks about introducing their money transfer, all about the money transfer um, and what they do. So they're also available on Google Pay, but I don't think it's the same thing. And where am I? I'm all out of order today. I had a right before I was getting ready to go live. Um, I had an internet outage, had a, which was really rare. I had to reboot my router, and like it, you know, you get that message that you're not connected to the internet. And um, this was the press release that was, um, or the the announcement of the uh, of Ripple to begin blockchain payments, um, working with Finabler. And then. Um, so moving right along, let's go to this. Uh, Ripple Ashish Birla claims, and I, now I love these articles. We always talk about what they say in this. He claims, you know, claims like it couldn't be true. It must be preposterous. He's saying that it's so, please. He claims that securities law is a good thing for digital assets, right? So let's look at the headline and let's go in and dissect it together. Let's look at what they're saying here versus what's really going down. So despite regulatory concerns, Ripple's senior vice president of product, Ashish Birla, he thinks positively of the securities law prevalent in the United States. Well, we all kind of think positively if it's positive, right? So he's really doing a nice spin here. He said in an interview while discussing the ICO and SEC fiasco, Berla said, I believe the securities law is very much a good thing for digital assets. You're not going to scale this industry unless you have the proper regulation. And we've been saying this forever. We've all been shouting this from the rooftops. We go on the top of our roofs and we start shouting, we start throwing things, breaking stuff. And then, uh, you know, Congress over here in the United States does all stuff, but it happens in other countries too. 
that what what issue they take the blow up and expose has nothing to do with us. Like, come on, let's get something rolling already. The um, um, Burl also said one use case that comes to mind is tokenizing real estate. And, you know, my fellow um, on the chain um, streamer, Jeff, who's currently over in, uh, I believe, in Italy right now um, on Lake um, Como. If I, I would have asked for uh, to show the picture, but he shows me a picture that's right out of a brochure. And I'm like, whoa, uh, is that for real? And then, of course, it is for real. But um, he talked a lot about in his last video he did last Saturday about tokenized video. Well, actually, did it on Monday from from uh, from Switzerland. So one use case is tokenized in real estate, which is typically very cumbersome to buy or raise money for. And if you can make something tokenized and liquid, you can think about a derivative products on top of that. Yeah, and that's very forward thinking right there, without a doubt, right? So I'm looking at Ferdy says Jungle Knows. We know Jungle Knows. What does he know? What's going on out here? What's what is it? Um Funky Zero Zero. What's going on, Funky? Hey, how are you? Is that Zero Zero or Funky O or Funky O? I don't know how that's pronounced. Big news in the last couple weeks. You're absolutely right, Funky. It's been kind of it's it's almost like there's so much good news. Now I did a video I dropped this morning. Um I talked about this new SDK. To me, that's right up there with with the MoneyGram deal. To me, it's one of the biggest things that happened. And I'm like, nobody's talking about it. So Coil um in conjunction with with Ripple released an SDK that basically takes the code to connect to um the the, the ledger and it just knocks it down by 80%. If you know anything about SDK software development kits, I'm freaking out about this. I'm like jumping around. I'm looking around I'm like nobody's talking about it. To me, it's one of the top three, thing, three things that's happened this year. You got the MoneyGram. They've had some acquisitions. But to me, this release of this SDK, why? Because it'll take any currency and um, any fiat, I should say, any fiat and then turn it with and, and also combine any sort of a uh, you know, digital asset and boom into a payment system, right? Easy. These SDKs are um, basically some uh, some programming stuff, but it's 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 taking a lot of stuff and really simplifying it. One of the things Coil, what I'm really excited about Coil that they've done is Coil.com. You can see them there. Is that when they started funding these companies, they started spending a lot of time looking at these companies, going into them, and when they started spending time looking at them, they realized, hey, there's an issue with the ecosystem and connecting and making this all work. So this is what's great about the whole Ripple ecosystem at large is that they see something, identify it, then they go ahead and roll out another solution. And we saw, you know, I could never, as a, you know, I'll be honest with you, I could never keep straight the difference between X Via, X Rapid, X this, X that, Spring, right? And I'm like, you know, I know I can understand liquidity. So I'm really glad and happy that they changed that, man. That was a really good thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, David Delgado knows. He yeah, right down. He knows. He's like, yeah, the SDK is ridiculously awesome. So sim- simpli- in a simplistic manner, you're gonna. I don't care what app you have, whatever you whatever you accept a payment for goods or services, you can now roll in any fiat currency, any cryptocurrency, and I liken this to what we saw on the institutional side with the banks and the MoneyGrams. The big institutions moving money for people. This is at a different level where you can, t- anybody can pick up the SDK, and you know you could integrate it. You know one of these uh, one of these blogging services, uh, ser- um, s- services, anything, anything you put a card in. You know you don't have to do credit cards anymore. You want to take Bitcoin and you want to d- d- transfer it over. That is a huge thing, and I'm just super excited about that. And if you want to just uh, check that out, so Ed Friend says he's waiting to see what Coinfield has cooking. Should be a monster the way they described it. Yeah, they sure have been hyping it. I'm, I think I'm, I'm pretty excited about it too. But you know, if you're gonna hype something, you're gonna deliver it, right? And I think that, um, I think they're gonna probably surprise us. If you know, they might come out with something really, really awesome. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really hyped about that as well. I gotta tell you, man, it's really good. Let's jump on here. So I wanted to jump on this. You know, we've seen a lot about this, um, but and I, I just talked about it um, right now. Um, but David Schwartz put out some ideas for the XRP ledger. The one thing that I wanted to go to right away was I wanted to go to, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, this is something I've always troubled me. You know, I always want to look at one aspect of this, but I've always looked at this, you know, and and anytime you wanted to open up a wallet, you needed a minimum of 20 XRP. And that's awesome. You know, when XRP was sub one cent, right, US, um, you know, it was under... And it was like, okay, well, 20 XRP. But what happens when XRP moons? I mean, what if it's at 500 bucks? What if it's a thousand? I get a 20 grand as your minimum. 
to even get in the game, you know, and it just seemed kind of preposterous. It sounded like a good idea at the time. I think he's spot on about this. I think we've all kind of looked at this together and thought like, well, that doesn't make sense. Not, not only this, but let's suppose it's worth 20 grand, right? Let's suppose it's worth, it goes up to 1,000 per XRP. Well, guess what? You got $20,000 sitting somewhere indefinitely, and you know a lot of you have, and on us, we have multiple wallets. Then what do you do, huh? Uh-oh, 20 grand sitting there. So kind of the rub here is that he's looking to like make it less, right? So you could take 15 out, maybe leave five. Um, it was set up for a very good reason, but I just wanted to tackle that because I'm excited. That's one thing. If anything goes through, that should be right at the top of the scale. Let's do it now before the moon happens. What's up, Tony Shine and the new test net for devs? Yeah, right on. Yeah, man, it's good to see you guys are connecting with this. You know, always a smart crew that shows up here. And um, yeah, it's absolutely... It, this absolutely is game changer. And it was such a, you know, the rollout was big and I went crazy about it. I'm like, am I am I going nuts about this? My gosh, it's phenomenal. I'm telling you right now. So we see a lot of stuff happening out there. Like, for example, Brave Browser announced um, Uphold Partnership for Enabling Browsing Rewards. So we're seeing all kinds of cross partnerships. You know, Brave obviously is a privacy browser. Um, they knocked down a lot of the tracking stuff. If you guys never use Brave, I love it on my mobile. I think it's fine it really fast, and there's some things that I use it for here. Um, and if I'm looking at other sites that are coil enabled, I'll use my Puma browser because it's native for that. But I like what's happening in the space. They're thrilled to announce that via their partnership with Uphold, um, their, their desktop browser features our new two-way Brave wallets rewards wallet, lets users take out attention token, the bat, earn for viewing, opt-in, privacy, protecting ads, or add their own bat. So I love this for um, content creators out there too. You know, the bloggers of the world, you know, Ferdy, who's an awesome blogger. If you guys don't know Ferdy, you, you got to go check him out. Ferdy, drop your link in there if you're still awake. And if you're not, well, God bless you, man. You should be sleeping anyway. Um, but no, dr Ferdy, drop your link in there. Um, but, you know, Ferdy and, uh, you know, writes in the same blogging platform as Hodor. So these guys, you know, I think we, I think it's time that we, you know, start accepting the bat token as well. But I love this move away from tracking. You know, we talk a lot about privacy here, and it's really strong that we're moving away from this, right? We've got, we've got these partnership right here with Brave. Then you have this Ripple partnership um, with Mozilla, right? Which is where Brendan, uh, Brendan Ike, who's the CEO of Brave, left Mozilla, Firefox, right? And so. We're starting to see this branching out and you can see that at one time ads were king. It's the only way you could make money. You go to a website today and there's 50 things flashing at you and hitting you in the face and a video starts playing and you're like, now it's one of the things that I disable this. I'm using a Safari browser because I'm on a Mac, but one of the things that I that I like to do is, is knock everything down. So I get rid of all those ads. Not only that, but it just crushes my computer. Um, you have JavaScripts running in the background, just sucking memory. It's just uh, nasty. So what's going on in here? What's going on in David Delgado? Yeah, it's like a Java plugin for everything. Yeah, that's a really that's a really nice way to put it. It's a plugin for everything, everything crypto, everything fiat. And you know, think about it like this: it's one thing to have um, the, the plugin. You know what um, what David Delgado is talking about? It's one thing to have that plugin. A completely other thing, really, to me, is the speed. Right. Boom. It doesn't matter what you're taking or what, you know, you could be using BitPay anywhere. It could be, you know, the Canadian dollar it could be the Mexican peso, you know, it could be in, um, you know, Japanese yen. It doesn't matter. This is really the strength of it. And that's really well said, man. That is really what's up. Ferdy knows. What is Ferdy talking about? What is Ferdy saying in here? I don't know. Ferdy saying something. I can't find the legendaries in here. News overload. You're right, man. We're getting pounded. So I talk a lot about Andres and Horowitz um, because um, I, I love this. I love their VC. There's a couple of VCs out there that I talk about a lot on the XRP Minute. And this is Chris Dixon. He's the general partner there. They announced this free crypto startup school at TechCrunch Disrupt. So TechCrunch Disrupt happens in a few different places. I think it's coming up in San Francisco. And with my startup, I applied there. I made the first cup. I never made it out there, but it's a really great. It's one of these functions that I will spend a lot of time going to, looking at startups. Because my ultimate goal is for have this stuff moon, and I want to be a, I want to be an investor. I want to invest in fintech and upcoming company companies. And because um, I have I spent a lot of time looking at the news, kind of seeing what's next. Love to be on the early stages of, of going into that. But what they're basically doing is for startups that they're really educating them because they've spent a lot of time and energy. They've uh, invested in like he has a. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it's uh, by Dixon and um, Katie Hahn. He said at TechCrunch at the time of the announcement that his firm had already invested in 20 cryptocurrency companies over five years, including Ripple, Coinbase, way back in 2013, to establishing a fund devoted to crypto. And so this is it. So what they're trying to do, and they're not charging for it because what they want to do is they want to pay it forward. When I see stuff like this, when I see people taking time to pay it forward, you know, and this, I mean, these guys are busy. They've got a lot going on. But when they make the whole ecosystem better, we all win. When everyone wins, it's better for everything. You get great competition. You get innovative products. So I love this move by these guys. It's just phenomenal. Libra reveals first roadmap member company set to meet in Switzerland in October. Well, we heard a lot about Libra that they, you know, back in June when they were announcing what they were going to do. We saw the pushback on it. But I see a lot of trouble in, in, in Libra land, really, because... I see Visa, MasterCard um, possibly wanting to back out. And interestingly enough, I also caught something earlier about PayPal. And you know when this happens, there's safety in numbers, right? Nobody wants to be, because what if they're wrong? What if it turns out to be the greatest thing ever? And what if, you know, the adoption starts happening and they're like, wow, I kind of like stuck. But there's safety in numbers. Now, if you got Visa, MasterCard, that's almost, and you, you throw PayPal in there, you're almost close to a royal flush, right? Put your cards down on the table. You go all in. So, it, 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 hey, well, we were we didn't necessarily call it wrong. It was also Visa and PayPal, right? So that's one of the ways to play it. But I see a lot of stuff going on there, and we'll we'll see how that sort of develops. So, oh boy, look at this. PayPal uh, may withdraw too. So we just talked about that, but there's a whole article here on this. The doubts. Nobody knows. They're scared. It's a big thing. Weird because they were all in uh, two three months ago, right? David Delgado, thank you very much for the five. Appreciate it. Always support the XRP community. We are the future one percenters. Yes, we are the future one percenters. And this is really good stuff. Thank you, uh, David Delgado. Appreciate that. Much appreciation. Um, yeah, we are the one percenters. You know, and sometimes we lose sight of that. And this is where when we read FUD, and I want to, I want to kind of sort of dovetail off what David just said about the one percenters. You know, we're so steeped in this. We, we watch each other's shows. We're like in the next interview and we're sharing stuff. And Ferdy's like dropping knowledge. Do you see this? Do you see this? And, you know, Jungle's coming out with the video and you're like, whoa, what's Jungle talking about? Right. It's all kinds of cool stuff happening. You know, we got the on the chain now and we have all the contributors. You can go to on the chain .io, learn more about what's going on and, and, and future updates. We are we're going to be we're posting now videos to Cinnamon and Coil. There's some other video platforms. We are platform agnostic. We will have multiple platforms for sure. We're not going to just have one platform. So that's, that's uh, yeah, I'm getting a Twitch. Uh, we're also broadcasting to Twitch. We're broadcasting also, and it's weird. I feel bad that I didn't pull up the chat. I have a chat too for a special chat for, um, guys, I'm a little rusty. I haven't done this in three weeks. So, yeah, I have a special chat for, where is it? Hello. Yeah, restream tweet. So, yeah, so I can actually, we're broadcasting to on the chain which is on underscore uh, the chain. It's really, we're working on getting on the chain, add on the chain. We got some hurdles to run through. We will get it, take us a little bit of time, but we did a lot of things behind the scenes for setup because we wanted it to be set up. Current application, not support anymore. All right, great, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, what do we have here? What else? Yeah, the new version, you wanna install it? Well, why not? Let's just install it. Let's see how that works. So this is what I cut out here, and this is built natively into Safari. Um, all this stuff, you see how slow it goes and just kills my computer. I hit one button, basically makes everything the same, kills all that other stuff. And Brave does a lot of the same stuff. So here we go, guys. Here we go. Oh, now it's making me log in. Seriously? Seriously? Interesting. All right, well, we're not going to do that right now. What is next on the agenda? So, guys, here's another one. Look at this. Another exchange, coinexchange.io, is closing down. And um, it's always sad to see this. It's not because of a hack or any security issues. Basically, what they're citing here, it's a business decision. Uh, the cost of providing the required level of security and support now outweigh their earnings. So they're spending more money on security and actual supporting the exchange. And so this is kind of, I wouldn't say a, I wouldn't say a, a flag, but I would say like other exchanges too, you know, this is always, all the other exchanges have to worry about this, you know, and it's a shame because they got to spend and invest so much time and energy with security. And the thing about security, it's not like you went, like you did something and you're like, I did it. What did you do? I locked it up. Security's done. Closed it. Done. Well, no, it's like, it's nonstop. Hackers keep coming. 
you know, it's nonstop. But it's sad to see an exchange um, close down. I'm happy to see for once. It wasn't because of a hack. It wasn't because they ran away with the money. They're giving plenty of ample time. But anyway, another exchange uh, bites the dust. I wouldn't want to be in that business. And uh, their board said, hey, enough is enough. They got out of it. Hey, a little Game of Thrones here. Let's talk some Game of Thrones. So if you know Macy Williams, um, she, her startup, Daisy, which I remember when it rolled out. Um, it's an app. And um, they're looking for new partnerships. She's uh, at TechCrunch um, Disrupt as well. She's best known as Arya on Game of Thrones. If you never watched Game of Thrones, it's amazing. Um, again, I'm a late bloomer. I just wa binge watched it last year. It was phenomenal. Um, on the app, creators establish a profile similar to other social networks, but the focus is not on gaining fans and like likes, but rather on helping creators find collaborators for their art, whether it's film, music, photography, they have art in their toy, art or anything else. Actress turned entrepreneur spoke this morning in TechCrunch's Disrupt about the decision to make Daisy less focused on traditional popularity matrix. You know, and what the approach they're taking, it's a cool app. It's on, um, you can go to Google Play or you can go to the, uh, the iPhone, um, you know, app store too, and you can see what's going on there. If you've never seen the show XRP Connie Angel, please do me this. Please carve out eight hours. Watch the first three episodes. I was in episode three, and my buddy that recommended it to me said, hey. Uh, and I went to him, like, please tell me this picks up. He goes, no, keep watching. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Then, oh, my God, I was in, man. I was like, well, I can't. I was binge watching him. I had, like, two picks in my eyes. No, it really was good. Just a, if you love those kind of stories, maybe it's not for everyone, but there's a lot of craziness going on in it. I would just have you recommend it. I never saw it either, and believe it, I believe it or not, I didn't want to see it. I'm like, I don't care about Game of Thrones. Uh, funny little side story, I might have told this one, but I was in, uh, I was actually in Northern Ireland where a lot of this is filmed. Um, I was actually at a startup party with my, with my startup. I was actually at a startup conference that we were, we were speaking at. I happened to go to Northern Ireland for a two-day trip, and one of those giant warehouses where they housed a lot of this, they had the Iron Throne there, and me, like an idiot, sat in it was like, this is cool, the one they have from the show, and then got out of it. Never took a picture or anything. Now I'm like, what were you thinking, man? And I actually had lunch on some of the tables they've used. Um, if you know the, the tables that they used in the, uh, well, I'll just say the Red Wedding. Um, anyway, you'll know what that is when you see it, but the Red Wedding, I got to sit at that table, and little would I know that I'd actually see what that was used in and how they used it. Anyway, this is really cool, but I like to see this. So you like to see celebrities and or people getting into apps and then really thinking about, Someone who's in the business really gets that it's not always about being popular, how many likes that I get. You know, I know we're all bummed. You put out a tweet and you're like, man, no one even saw it. I don't even know if they liked it. I don't even know. You know, you don't know sometimes, but you just want to know that someone's looking at it. And I like this idea of helping people who are creatives intertwine. This is all very cool here. Which one are you saying, Danny, to watch too? Danny's saying, oh, yeah, Walking Dead. Yeah, don't get me started on Walking Dead. I was going back and forth with Rob Cash, another content contributor on this channel. We were going back and forth today um, talking about Walking Dead starts again on Sunday. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. I almost would do if, if there was enough. You know, this is actually a thought. I'm, and, and you guys let me know down below whether you're watching it live or on the restream. Would you guys be open to talking some shows? You know, would you be interested in talking about stuff where we... We talk about plot lines. We dissect episodes. I don't know if that's interesting or if there's a subset of people that might want to watch that. But I thought it'd be kind of cool. Maybe not do that every week, but maybe twice a month. I don't know. It's I have a lot of other passions uh, besides cryptocurrencies. And, you know, binge watching uh, shows is one of them. So I don't know if that makes sense or not. Rain, what are you saying? Anyone here using Binance US? Do they have VeChain? Guys, um, if you can help Rain out, serious question. Asking for a friend, my friend Rain. <laughs> Rain, everyone wants to know, do they have VeChain? Um, I haven't signed up for Binance US yet. Um, that's interesting um, whether they do. All right, so Danny says not yet. Um, obviously, David Delgado's in New York. You know, in New York, you're, you're not allowed to um, own cryptocurrency. You're on lockdown 24-7. They call the police if they find out you're browsing or even looking at an exchange. I'm joking, of course, but it's kind of crazy what's going on in New York. And I know several of you that are in New York. Sean Schaefer, um, also another guy out there. Cornfield building on the ledger. That's awesome, Ferdy. Do you know anything of what they're up to? I mean, you got any ideas or theories about what they're doing? You always seem to be in the know. I'm just curious. The having show, are you ready for the 2020 having? Um, I don't know about the 2020 having. Um, what, which which uh, cryptocurrency are we talking about? Are we talking about a coin here? What are we talking about in the having? You can buy in Cali. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I'm in Florida, and most of the uh, wait, Florida actually is. That was one of the states where you where Binance USA. That was one of the things that uh, Jeff and I were talking about from the Hoddle 
review, we were talking about it. He was saying I was going to sign up there, but they're not you know, good in Florida. So, hey, Carl Lewis, what's up? Hello, ladies and gents and those who identify as Newt. I don't defend. I, I identify as a um, as a uh, you know a humanoid living on the third rock from the sun, uh, and currently in North America, in Florida, in Boca Raton. That's where I'm at. The Having Show. BT, oh, BTC, right on BTC. Um, yeah. So that is interesting. When exactly is that happening, though? Having Show. When is the BT? When when the BTC having? I don't know. What's what? I haven't seen any like uh, real dates on that. XRP Carolina, what's going on, man? XRP Carolina, dude, have you dropped a video in a while? I, it seemed like I haven't seen you, but just so you know, um, I, I kind of, I now, I had to go back and sort of reignite all my subscriptions. So that's another whole thing that, um, because I'm switching channels and whatnot. So I want to talk about this, Brex, and the reason I'm talking about this, not really cryptocurrency focus, but these two guys, they might be brothers, they could be twins. I don't know. They have the same look. They got the cool glasses. One has a little bit of a beard. They might even be brothers. I don't even know. But, you know, anyway, they got a cool look. They kind of contrast each other. And um, so Brex is this new Silicon Valley fintech darling. Um, lofty plans to battle big banks and Stripe. So they're taking a completely different approach. Code name Gemini. Weird name because uh, uh, Gemini is an exchange. They announced a new product designed to replace and improve the functionality of traditional bank accounts. Brex Cash, as it will be known publicly. It's also weird, too. I would have just called it Brex, but the whole Brex Cash almost sounds like Brex It. The naming is kind of weird, but okay. But I, I like the idea what they're doing here. It's a business cash management account integrated into the Brex card, or a corporate card for startups launched in 2018. And uh, so I like what they're doing. They're not really a bank here. But what, if you're a startup, you're a new company or an existing company, you can basically get um, a 1.6 yield on your money. And all this is kind of funny. It's weird to see this, right? Pay zero fees on ACH and wire transfer. So if I'm somebody – now, if um, I do business development, if I'm in business development right now and someone happens to be watching this for in business development for Ripple, I call these guys tomorrow and say – Hey, what's going on? Um, hey, yeah, you know, we got we got a really interesting product you want to take a look at. Zero fees on ACH and wire transfers. Okay, well, I'll take I'll I'll tell you what. Let me get my time machine and go back to 1999. That's just odd to me. The idea behind what they're doing, basically, they're not a bank. They're circumventing a bank. You have this one account. It's all you know. It's actually a very it's a cool video. Their their um, their UI is very well executed and done. Zero fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. And I was looking for. Yeah. So the other thing you get to do is order. You basically earn Brex points and these Brex points, you get 200 Brex points per reward per ACH and 50 points per wire every time. So there's no cap on what you can earn. So they're taking an interesting approach. I just feel like they're a little bit off um, on timing wise on this whole thing. And there was something specific I wanted to go over because um, I know they are. Uh, based on lending tree analysis. Okay, they're basically citing some of the words. There was one part. We think we want a lot of credibility before who's going to give their money to a random ass startup called Brex. Brex co-CEO of Henrique Dubagra. Dubagra, whatever. I don't know if that's French. Who knows? I'm butchering names here. You know, everyone else does it. DAI does it. What the heck? I can jump right in with that. But anyway, um, I, I did have something in here. By, by the way, Y Combinator um, out in California had the privilege of visiting that place. And I just asked for a simple water. And what did I get? I got coolers full of drinks that were so good for you. They might have been better than water. So uh, that's all I can tell you on that one. Um, I don't know. I'm losing. Here, Brex follows the launch of Stripe Capital, a new offering from payments behemoth Stripe that will make instant loan offers. So this whole fintech space is basically growing. But imagine if these guys would give you points based on doing, because what does it cost to do a transfer? There is a cost associated with doing ACH and wires. So somebody's absorbing that cost somehow, some way. And if they have zero fees, I just see something like this in the crypto space, especially utilizing. Yeah, thank you for Thank you, guys. Go follow Ferdy on Coil right there. Ferdy on Coil. Um, some later date, we'll, we'll have to start putting our Coil um, links down below as well. But we're on there and we're getting up to speed. Very soon we're going to be all everything everything that you see air, whether it's on the chain live or on the chain, uh, the other cha the other channel, which is mostly just for uploads. We are going to be going to podcasts. So we're going to be taking the data, repurposing it, new intros, uh, a really cool sort of a way, taking all the important bits and putting them out the podcast. Because a lot of feedback, we did some of our own market research, Jeff and I, and some of the other people that we're, that we're working with here. And we did some research. And one of the things they said was, 
you know, it's YouTube's a weird animal. It's like you go on YouTube and I, you know, I love YouTube, but a lot of times I'm listening more than I'm watching. So you might be able to go on your favorite. You can go on your know, Google podcast, Apple podcast, um, a Spotify. I listen to Spotify all day long and now I listen to, to and, and some of the bigger ones like Stitchers, a whole slew of them we're going to be on. So you'll be able to subscribe in multiple places. So take us on the go. You don't have a chance to listen to the show. Not a big deal. Listen in your car and don't have to worry about the bandwidth being sucked out of your phone or getting the, the blips or the phone turns off because you know how it is with YouTube anyway. That's a little bit about what's going on there. Um, yeah, I would love to see. Yeah, so XRP Carolina would love to see. Why don't you do a live stream? Actually, we should do a live stream together. We should get you on here, man. I'd love to. I'd love to bring you on here. We'll, we'll live stream together. We should bring a bunch of people on. Rain, a whole bunch of people. Bring them on. Just and not even talk. We'll bring everybody on. We won't even talk about cryptocurrency. That'll be kind of fun. I'm kidding, of course. Anyway, let's look out. What do we got? A couple more things to go on here, guys. Sorry, I got a little bit of a late start tonight. Um, saw this. This is really kind of cool, too. I love all this stuff. I'm always fascinated by, you know, those shows on the HGT, HGTV channel. You know, they have the thing called Tiny House. And, may, and I'm sorry if I got the name wrong, but it's called Tiny House. And someone who's downsizing my 3,700 square foot house is now going to live in a room repurposed as a house. But I've seen people, I saw an article on a woman recently, and she cited the fact that she wanted to spend her time traveling. So she said her costs were eliminated and she could spend all her money going on and, and seeing places in the world, right? So this, these top modern, um, these, these homes right here, it's a cool site. Um, it's called Duelito, uh, which means if it's Spanish and English kind of put together, meaning small dwelling. Dwell, dwelling means, uh, you know, like a house, you know, a place you, you can live in. And Duelito is a, is a, makes it small. So Duelito means... Uh, a small housing, so it's cool. Like like under 50 grand, you could get yourself a bedroom, put that in the middle of some place. But I thought it'd be cool to check out some of these here. You know, obviously 50 to 100k. You know, some they're they're interesting. They're nicely well done and they're delivered basically done. They show up and they're a little bit different than those ones on wheels. These are meant to sort of sort of get plopped down and and um, let's take a look. We can look at some of the floor plans. That's a skinny one, but let's look at one of these real quick. You know, it'd be cool to just have these, um, I don't know, these, I, probably some people, if they had enough land, they put them on their, look, it's all windows too. That's another weird thing. I hope they have some sort of LEDs, but um, let's go take a tour of this puppy. Let's see what it looks like. There's the floor plans. You can see it looks very long there. There's a looking from the outside. But, you know, these look cozier to me than those tiny houses, you know, that they roll around. This one looks actually pretty interesting. I mean, it, as small as this is, it just doesn't feel that small. Look at the ceiling the high ceiling the windows you know it just has a really good feel here's the guys building it out you know i just think it's pretty awesome um if sixty thousand dollars base price you know i guess when you add stuff in there it's only 320 square feet it's pretty insane what they're doing with 320 square feet and um let's go back a little bit here let's look at one of these other ones here i don't know i just want to let's see so let's see what it looks like when you get into the 150 to 200k range let's see what that looks like so yeah, obviously you get a little bit more. This is interesting. So it's only uh, 500 square feet. Okay, so I think this varies. Let me look at this one here. So that, there you go. Let's take a look at this. Now, what's interesting about these things too, these guys, it's all built with no code. These guys leverage tools where they're not coding any of this stuff. It's all built with off-the-shelf apps that you and I could basically use. I did see that somewhere. I don't know where I saw that sighting. I would love to, but I did read that earlier. It's a nice looking places. Look at this. It's pretty nice. You know, it's got a good feel to it. It's very, very small. But again, it doesn't it doesn't really feel small. Um, pretty nice layout. Right. I mean, I, I'm impressed with the way this looks. Look, I mean, it's it's not massive, but it's big enough and comfortable enough to live in. Just plop these down in just like really remote places. You know, I, I, that, that I can see my, you know, just having this out in the woods somewhere. If you have a lot of land once this puppy moons. You hear what I mean? You hear what I'm saying? Who's down with OTC? Who's down with OTC? Can I get a hell yeah? Who's down with OTC? Let's see what else is on here. So we're wrapping. We're getting close yet. So Europe's top court. You know, we talk about privacy and I saw this one. This is weird, right? Europe's top court sets a new line on police and illegal speech. And I'm like, okay, you got me. Let me go in here. Let me look at it. So Europe's top court set a new line for the policing of illegal speech online. The ruling has implications for how speech is regulated on online platforms. 
um, such as Facebook can be instructed to hunt for and remove illegal speech. See, what I don't like about this whole word illegal speech, now we got people who are going to become like, who are the people deciding and choosing what's illegal, right? So someone's expressing themselves and they say, you know, I really love you know, um, I love cinnamon. Well, that sounds weird. I don't like, you know, it keep, I'm, and I'm making it goofy, but who are the people are deciding what it is? And then so you're just randomly saying off the cuff thing or, you know, somebody put a post somewhere and you're just laughing about it and you put something on there and all of a sudden, uh oh, that's a legal speech. Next thing you know, they're hauling your ass off to the, uh, the, the clink and you're going down. Right. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a weird thing. Um I don't know. I, I, I just I, I see this stuff and I start seeing that more and more of the freedoms are you know, eroded every day. This is happening over in the EU. But let's face it, it's pretty much happening everywhere, isn't it? It's happening everywhere. Right. It's exactly right. It's happening everywhere. So the there we go popping back. Yeah. So when when we think about when I look at privacy, you know, and I talked about another thing, too, where where everybody talks a good game. They're always talking about privacy. Hey, you know, we care about privacy. It's really exciting. You know, let's do this. But, you know, talk is cheap. You got to back it up with something. And if you continue to talk about, you know, we see this with Facebook. Facebook has been the, the notorious at this. And I'm not bringing notorious in. I'm just saying the word notorious, right? So they, what, what are they consistently doing? They're constantly telling us about, we really care about your privacy. All right, we'll do something. You know, stop with the, uh, the, the uh, the platitudes already, you know, and and again, I I don't go on there very much. I mean, I I was almost going to go on there today, uh, you know, today. A big shout out to uh, my mom, who's her birthday today. My dad's birthday was yesterday. My birthday will be the next day. No, no, it's not. But it was funny because they have these friends that they they've been friends with for some time and told the story of when uh, my my uh, my dad gets in the car. They were get, going somewhere together, to celebrate their birthday, and, and he says uh, that's. Having birthdays one day apart is dumb, and it turns out they're married couple. They have a birthdays one day apart in August. I'm like, what's going on? Do you have other friends? It's like a thing. It's like a some sort of an occurrence with your friends. They have they have birthdays. Like yeah, we only we only associate with people that have birthdays either in the same month or and and you know after the same you know adjacent days. I don't know. Just saying. Yeah, they care about it. It's worth billions. Well said, Rain. They sure do care about it. They keep talking about it. The more they talk about it, the more they talk themselves out of it. Right on. So that's what I'm talking about. And uh, so just kind of, I want to just say one thing. Thank you for being here on the new channel. Thank you for subbing. The other channel down below, if you're not subbed to it, go sub to that. You'll get daily drops on videos uh, by some of the other content creators on the channel. And, um, you know, go to the, onthechain.io. We're going to really be spending a lot of time building this site out and uh, putting some cool stuff together. Podcast, we'll announce that when that's ready. But I'm excited about it because I'm excited to hear what you think about it. I want to see if it's going to work for you and, and and what we need to make it really tweak it, you know, and make it work. Right now, I've been attempting to do videos under 10 minutes, attempting. I talk a lot. It's what I do, right? So I talk a lot. I'm a business guy. I spend all my day on phones and conference calls. But I wanted to hear from you. Um, if you haven't already, smash that like. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the bell. Now they got a new thing they're doing. You click the bell, and it's like they kind of trick you. You you get the bell, but then you got to say all. If you don't flip that button all now, it's like what is this? A new ring? We weren't getting them before. Now I got to click a bell. Then I got to click the uh, on the on the flip up menu. I got to click all of the notices. But let me know down below. Let me know something you connected with on this particular video. If there's something you like, and um, feel free to reach out to me. I see a lot of more people reaching out with uh, with with content, and if it shows up here, I will shout you out. You bring something to my attention to either myself, Jeff, or the other creators. Uh, we'll shout you out. Um, I like to give credit where credit's due, and I don't have enough time to look at everything. That's why I rely on you because you're far smarter than I am. So to keep everything what they say real. That's my take. What's yours? Chip? Oh! Oh! I want to make sure I got that in there. So this is a practice one. It's not a real one. It's practice because Dutchy RTB, who's not in here right now, but he's going to watch the replay, and he's going to say, Chip, you didn't do it right. You didn't do it right. We didn't catch it. So now I'm going to do it right. You get two of them this time, Roy, the badass. Here you go. Ready?